Paul. Uh, excited about these guys joining us. Uh, another great group, uh, very hard working uh, staff to um, kind of bring this into one group and uh, still not over as far as uh, guys will sign in February and, and all those things. I'm excited about this group. It's been one of uh, probably the, the funnest to recruit. It was you know kind of a half, half COVID recruiting class because they didn't get to come on campus, I guess, until June 1st maybe. And uh, everybody came, came through. It was a wild uh, time with everybody trying to come at the same time. And uh, our staff did a tremendous job. Our recruiting staff did a tremendous job. Our administration helped. Our academic folks that meet with these kids, they come on visits. There was a span from June 1st to June uh, 28th or 29th where we spent every single day here uh, with somebody here. So that was a big part of this signing class. It started long before that, but it started before that on Zoom. It started before that in communication, talking, but physically seeing people and getting in front of them, it was certainly great uh, to have these kids being able to come to campus like they did. Uh, proud of the group, uh, really feel like it's spread out the way it should be, dispersed that way. We hit some needs we needed. Um, a lot of great stats I can read through, but you guys have all those. I mean, it's really a, a well-rounded class <clears throat> in terms of multiple sport athletes, high academic achievers, top ranked guys, which I don't really care about what they're ranked. I care a whole lot more about how they play. And we've seen evidence of the guys that have played a big role on our team. Some of those guys were not the guys we talked about on this day. Uh, during their career, and I think we know a lot about those guys, a lot more about what's inside you that that, uh, that matters most. So, with that, I'll open it up for questions. Coach, it's hard not to notice uh, the defensive back recruiting that you guys did, both in terms of the pedigree or ranking of them, but the number of them too. Can you just talk about how you feel like to address that and why that was such an area of emphasis? Yeah, we don't we, we don't have enough DBs now. I mean. I don't know what you would be referring to. I don't know how many are in there. I get confused between what's in and what's not in, but we don't have enough. We're still lower than we've ever been in terms of defensive backs. So it's, I don't, I'm not real smart about accounting, but first in, first out, how many in, how many out. We have more leaving than we have coming. And that's, we were already below. So if you have more leaving than you have coming, then you're actually negative net gain. So we're still behind <coughs> the defensive back position and it's a it's a position that's been really you know it's been tough for us this year because we've not been able to play uh, uh, dime packages. We've not been able to do some of the things we want to do and that's six DBs on the field and I, I am really proud of the DBs in this class that we have um, but we're not we're not anywhere near where we used to be. I mean we, I guess I think we all I think we have seven that left since the last uh, year. And then you throw in the seniors, those those kind of core Georgia guys that have been here forever that are now finishing. When you add that seven plus four or five, that's 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 a one year window of thirteen to fourteen guys. So in my mind, you know, we're still kind of short numbers of uh, scholarship players. Coach asked about uh Gunner Stockton and uh, what he's gonna have to prove. <coughs> the, the recruitment of Gunner was really interesting because we've known Gunner, at least I've known Gunner since he was a small kid. You know, his dad uh, hosted me at uh, a first visit in Georgia Southern many years ago, so I've known his dad for a long time. My dad was the, the high school coach there. As Gunner was a young, young kid, um, a tremendous athlete, a uh, tremendous character. I don't know that you could raise a finer young man uh, in today's day and age of all the, I don't know what you call it, the attention seeking uh, people. He's never done that. And uh, he's stuck to his guns that he loves UGA and that he wants to be here and uh, certainly a, a major part of our signing class. Kirby, you were just talking a lot about the, the quantity of defensive backs you have. What, what about the quality of the guys that you uh, have signed in terms of uh, you know, what you liked about them and uh, how does Starks fit into that mix? Yeah, I, you know, I don't think you actually ever know exactly what you have. You certainly feel great about them, but to to tab anybody, the the, the next guy, the first guy to start, I mean, I think it's hard. I'm, uh, the length and the speed uh, is what sticks out the most. I think, uh, you know, we, we, we've missed some size in, in recent years, and uh, we like to have uh, length. We like to have toughness. I like intelligence. You know, I like ball skills. 
I think a lot of these qualities and traits show up. You know, your ability to play man to man. I think more in college football now than ever before. If you have a liability in coverage, it's easier to find it. You know, it used to be we were all up in a in a little phone booth, and now we're all out here. So your mistakes or your uh, <coughs> guys that can't cover, it's almost out of control. Like they, like they 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 spot it on you and they get you. I think this group number one has speed. They have man to man coverability. Uh, they're going to help us, but there's just not enough of them. And it, what's interesting is it used to be you couldn't find O linemen and D linemen, and I still think they're hard to find. But you see these schools, top notch schools, all on the same uh, DBs because there's not enough of them to go around. You know, the the premier position right now uh, for a lot of people is to go play wide out, and we got to find some guys that can cover those guys. Kirby leads perfectly into my question about the wideouts and the guys you added. Um, that have signed already. Just what have you liked about those guys? And you, you talk about being more explosive on offense. I guess how do they sort of figure into those plans and in terms of being more explosive and creating big plays in the passing game? Well, it starts with speed. You got to have vertical speed down the field, and we feel like we've got some guys that can really stretch the field and do that. Um, high character. You got to be able to, to, to learn. You got to be able to uh, buy into the the offense, the the understand the splits, understand the route tree, understand all the things, the intricacies that go into playing the position. Um, and we got a really good group there. I think each one of those guys that we've been able to bring on board brings a different attribute. You know, whether it's ex excellent speed, excellent size, uh, quickness, toughness, all those things you look for. And um, in, in, in wideout is another position that when you look across the board, we're we're down. Like we were down all year, not just because of the injury. We were just down because we had three or four leave. Um, and now we're trying to replace all those guys and play catch up. Uh, and that's tough to do in, in, in our league. I like to have the numbers where we kind of hit quota, and you're finding out more and more now it's easier to leave than it is to get them. So we got to get some more guys there. Kirby, you mentioned stars and rankings, not caring about that. One, well, the O line recruiting, I think people around here haven't gotten accustomed to the five stars, blue chips, whatever. These guys this year, not all in there. What, what went into the evaluation of these guys in pursuing this group of alignment? Well, I think it's like everything. You have a. Um, uh, group, you have a class of alignment, and any NFL GM or scout would tell you, okay, this class is loaded with this. You know, last year's NFL draft class had a lot of really good corners. You know, we had two corners go pretty high, but we had corners go before. It was a really big corner draft class. As you look across the country, the offensive line class now, I'm not talking about recruiting rankings like you referenced. I wouldn't, I wouldn't refer to that because they're going to have a certain number of five stars and four stars they've got to hit. But the pool of offensive linemen probably wasn't as great as it's been in years past in terms of quality depth at that position. Now, if you go statistically, there's 100, 104 stars, 25 five stars. There may be the same number, but we're talking about on our board, we rate things completely differently than stars and things like that. We rate them where we can rate them across classes, meaning compare a guy in three classes ago to a guy in this class, there were probably not as many. Um, guys, I feel great about the guys we got. We got a couple guys with great size. Uh, we got a couple guys with great um, uh, upside. Kids that we think are going to be really good players uh, that maybe haven't played football for a long time. But I love the core group we got, and we got a good group here and good nucleus here on campus that we feel good about in terms of offensive line. Kirby, uh, you get, these days you have two signing periods in two months. Uh, you got. Units now getting NIL deals, uh, and then you've got to get ready for the playoff in the middle. So, from the face of it, it seems like a mess. Do you have any thoughts or suggestions on where it needs to be heading? I don't. I don't have any thoughts where it needs to be heading. And uh, you know, a mess would probably be your words. It's uh, it's the world I live in. So it's not a mess to me. It's the world I live in. It's like you know, you better learn to deal with it and be on top of it. And we're all dealing with the same mess. So who handles that better is everything. And uh, I focus on how we can do it better, not on how messy it is. Outside of Chandler Smith's speed, what else stood out to you uh, or about him in this recruiting process? Character. He's a high character young man that we actually recruited a long time and uh, had an official visit set up with. And then you know he ended up committing to Florida. and. Um, after that, we kept in contact with him. Uh, I think he's got a great set of parents, you know, military-based, uh, on time to everything, 
uh, academics important to him. Um, he's a really fast track guy, uh, excellent hands. And when you look at the skill positions, that's the one trait that you probably don't develop as much as a lot of other traits, which is just sheer speed. Kirby, I wanted to ask specifically about Malachi Starks. I guess one, with his body type and athleticism, do you see him maybe as a potential star? And I guess two, nowadays, do you recruit maybe specifically to the star position versus maybe taking a safety or corner and converting with that position you know, down the line? Well, if we thought a guy could be a star, a really good star, then we would say he could also be a really good corner or safety. It's not like we recruit to the star um, position. I mean, certainly it is a position in and of itself. He's on the field. 85%, 80% of the season, but we don't look at it that way. I look at it as you're developing two positions when you're here at any position. If you're a guard, you're developing as a center too. If you're a tackle, you might be developing as a guard or center. If you're a back, you're going to develop as a wide out that plays in space. If you're a wide out, you're going to develop as a slot. So everybody has two homes because we want to develop you where you become better and not uh, specialize. So. The star position is is a guy that like, we've had corners that played star and we've had safeties that played star, uh, but I think Malachi has a bright future. He's fast. Uh, number one, he's he's very intelligent. He's high character, and and you're going to hear me repeat that over and over because that matters way more than what reputation they're coming in with. Kirby, how big was persistence with this class going after guys that that may not have been committed to UGA at the time and looking elsewhere, um, but you know. That were you know y'all were still interested in stayed involved with them all the way through. Yeah, it's always the case. I, I, I wouldn't say this is like just this class has been persistence. It's every class. It's consistency in messaging. It's consistency in communication. It's the number one overall quality that I want to be known for in recruiting. It's consistency in performance. Consistency in messaging. Uh, continuity, like our staff and our program. Um, we, we, we won out a lot on that because, you know, a lot of folks by default had things change and uh, we didn't have a lot of change and we were able to continue developing a relationship with people even if they're committed somewhere else because you never know what's going to happen. Okay, let's take a pause and move over to a uh, bowl game and let's uh, maybe start Coach Smart with uh, maybe just a general comment about Michigan and then we'll take some questions. Well, we really haven't focused on Michigan in terms of our preparation with the players. We have focused on us. We've been able to get uh, a light practice in, I guess it was last Saturday, uh, a heavier practice in yesterday, and we've been able to get some uh, conditioning and workouts in in between as we've been recruiting and on the road recruiting. The players are finishing up final exams. Today is the last day of final exams, so uh, they're finishing up those. They've had a hectic time. Uh, getting ready for that. They've also had a little bit of off time. Uh, but as we turn the page kind of towards Michigan, we as a staff have been working on them for several days now, preparing, getting things ready. Uh, we'll start prepping the players um, for some of that here in the next uh, couple of days. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of batten down the hatches and start practicing a lot heavier here tomorrow for those guys. Ray Jan. Um, we've, we've seen, um, I know you, you probably feel like you're, you're being as diligent as you can already on the, on the COVID front, but um, as some numbers have, have been rising, I wonder if you're having to refocus again and maybe uh, reemphasize what you guys are doing with, with, with players' safety and precautions. Yeah, Ron's had a heightened awareness, certainly in uh, the recent weeks and days. Uh, you know, we've got a large, large portion of our team that's been uh, vaccinated and continue to be diligent about that and ask the guys that aren't to be extra safe. And uh, we've taken some precautions around the building uh, to be smart. Certainly uh, that time of year, you know, we went through the kind of, I don't call it a flu season, but we had a little bout with the flu there that, that, that made me concerned as well about COVID. But uh, here in the last couple uh, days, we've, we've really been on top of it. And uh, our guys have been, our guys are, are, are understanding that we have to be safe. We cannot afford to lose anybody at this time. And um, Ron and his staff have been incredible. Kirby, obviously you put out the statement about Lanning and his departure. Just wanted to you know, get further comment on that and how that's been. And clarification, when you said that Schumann and Muschamp would be the co-defensive coordinators going forward, is that for the bowl game or is that for next season? Yeah, clarification is 
Muschamp and and both Muschamp and Schumann will be co-coordinators. That's what the clarification is. So Lanning's done a tremendous job here. He is by far and away uh, one of the most loyal guys, hardworking guys that uh, I've been around. He's bright. Um, he's energetic. He's a good teacher. Uh, he'll do he'll do wonderful things at Oregon. I'm so happy for him that he got an opportunity for a job like that. You know, he had had several interviews, several opportunities that he was not interested in, um, some that he was, and uh, it was one that, that he thought would be a, a great opportunity. So I'm glad he's staying on with us to, to, to help us finish this thing out. He's done a great job. Um, Coach, a couple minutes ago, Lewis said that Michigan plays big boy football. Uh, what stands out to you in terms of their physicality and what you've seen so far? Great run game, great backs, three really good backs, really physical. I mean, just, just extremely physical at the point of attack. Um, two quarterbacks that are, you know, one's really athletic, the other's athletic, and they use both those guys. Um, they do a really good job. I mean, they keep you off balance, and um, they have a great play-action game, great use of their tight ends. Uh, and defensively, they've, they've come a long way from the Michigan I knew two or three years ago where we had kind of studied them in the offseason when they had a lot of sacks and a lot of turnovers. Um, Chris McDonald's done a lot to change that, and you can see they're playing really, really, really hard, really very sound on defense. Kirby, I guess you're going to find out more as practice really does get going, but, uh, you know, following the SEC, uh, how is the mentality of the team? And I think thereafter you said, that, you know, you thought you'd have their attention more so. Uh, has that been the case? Yeah, we haven't done a lot. So it's really good to get them away. Focus on finals, focus on their health, um, focus on a lot of other things that they've got going on. Because I think to get somebody's total focus, you can't sustain that for four weeks. You can't sustain that for three weeks. And you want to build to a point of getting back to an in-season mode. I don't think you can continue doing what you did in-season for three or four weeks because the game is too far away. So you know, we've taken a mental check to say, okay, what, what kind of shape are we in? What kind of physical shape? What kind of mental shape are we in? Our guys are in a really good place. Um, and we've slowly started to come back, like I mentioned. So the two practices that we've had, they've been high energy. They've done an awesome job. They've been great. But it's more about what they're going to do from this point forward as we really get into things this next uh, couple weeks. Kirby, obviously this is a weird time with people dividing attention between signing day and what's moving forward. So now that we're talking about the game, um, obviously quarterback and moving forward is always a narrative. So has anything happened since that game that has caused you, or are you going through a reassessment um, process before the game? And if if Stetson Bennett is still the guy, can you specify specifically what it is about him that you like over JT Daniels going into this game? Yeah, I don't know if I can answer all those questions. It's, uh, there's like three of them in there, but at the, at the end of the day, I think we have four really good quarterbacks in our system. I really feel confident in four guys that can play quarterback for us. I continue to say and repeatedly say, both those guys are evaluated each and every day. Stetson did some really good things in the Alabama game. He made a couple bonehead plays as well that he has not played and he has not done in the past. Just like we reassess every single position, just like I said after the game, we reassess everything by how you practice, what you do, and everything you do. But his feet have been a blessing for us. His ability to run, scramble, make things open, make plays with his feet have been good. He made a couple of poor decisions in the last game, but he's not the only one that did that. So we'll continue to evaluate it. I hope that answers it for you. Raise your hands. The other one back right here. Kirby, how did, how did the Rose Bowl experience a few years ago help you manage time and getting a team ready? Because it's, it's a bowl trip. They're there several days early. But yet there's huge significance in this game, unlike you know other bowls where there's there's another game after this one conceivably. How, how do you how do you approach that with the team, and it's still being a bowl trip? Yeah, it's huge significance in every game. Yeah, just making sure we're, we're clear on that because the, 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 I know that people don't think the bowl games matter, but they they, they matter. Um, certainly being in the CFP heightens the uh, 
attention to it. And uh, we have a really solid plan. You know, I was able to be a part of that uh, CFP process while at Alabama. I was able to do it here. Um, and we feel really comfortable with the prep. You know, we build up to a point, and then we have a Christmas break, and then we have a game week at the location. Uh, when we go to the location, we're honed in, we're focused, just like we would be for a bowl game. I think the, the intensity of the practice and the awareness of the situation of your leaders on your team is probably the biggest difference. You know, I mean, people are really locked in and focused and attention to detail, just like they should be for a bowl game. You don't like treat things differently, but uh, our guys are aware of that and you prepare in a very similar fashion in terms of getting ready. Right now, we're, we're, we're actually trying to get our team better, like get our twos and threes as many reps as possible because it's like an extra spring practice. I mean, we'll have 14 to 15 practices before we play, and that's literally a, an extra spring practice. Got time for two more questions? Uh, I've got kind of a two-part. Uh, one, going into this year, everybody thought that every game, everybody had to score a ton of points to win. That was kind of the new college football. You guys had historic success. I think you had to go back to 86 Oklahoma to find a team that did what you did during the regular season, points allowed. So one, do you think you were able to show that maybe you don't have to get into those type of shootouts and score so many points? And then two, you were at Alabama one year when Coach Saban said there were a lot of guys with their eye on the NFL and that might have detracted from prep. What did you learn from that experience as Alabama redeemed themselves a couple of years later with a with national title? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the last question. Is that directed at our team or just yeah, in I think general? Yeah, 12, 12 or 15 guys that could get drafted. How do they? Keep those guys 12 or 15 that would break every single record that I've ever seen <laughs> but it's good it's good I mean I don't know how many will get drafted but it's usually higher for you guys than what the NFL people tell us but regardless of that I think every year we go play we have a group of players that potentially could get drafted I think you would agree with that we have a group whether that's 60 or three but we have a group the distraction is only if you make it one because the best way to get drafted higher is to do what? Play well. And I think the distractions outside of our building, they're there year round. I mean, the distraction of, a, of, a, of an agent or a, 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 a whatever, social media, that, that never changes. Um, it only becomes greater and greater and greater as you move along throughout the season. But th these guys have been incredible at being focused at what they have to. I mean, Michigan has guys that are going to get drafted that are have that at Alabama, Cincinnati. That they all have good players. They wouldn't be there. So everybody's dealing with that and how you manage it internally. I'm talking about within your skull session, skull session groups, your your leaders on your team. That's really a team that comes out ahead, that has the ability to jump out ahead. As far as your defensive question, I mean, I, I think it's week to week. I think it's really how your defense plays. Could, could our defense keep us in some games where we didn't have to shoot out? Sure, they, we, we, did some, we did that some this year. Um, but we also had ones where people scored. You know, there was time at the Tennessee game it was looking like that. Certainly the Alabama game would be one. But a lot of that is based on what we did, meaning – what did we do? We, we didn't play this coverage right. We didn't play that coverage right. And when you don't do those things, you give up big plays. And when you give up big plays, you know, you have to score points. So it, it's, it's twofold, you know. It's a, it's a total complementary football. And the one thing we did really well this year was play complementary football. And we didn't do that the last time out. Kirby, you were talking about the extended, or basically an extra spring practice. And I wanted to ask you, you talked about some guys in the defensive backfield, Jalon Bullard, I guess, being one of them, maybe Kamari Lasser as well. Are there, is this kind of a golden opportunity for those guys to maybe kind of get over the hump and, and you know, be, from being on the cusp to kind of maybe earn a role for themselves? I mean, is that something you guys are looking for to take place during these types of practices? I don't know how realistic. I, I'm, in my career, which has been long being around bowl practices, I've probably been in a bowl game, you know, everywhere it seems like I've been. I've been in a bowl game. You don't see a kid go from like, okay, he just had this magic switch and he just took over. You know, now he, I've seen him grow and get better. We got some guys out there that I think like, man, that guy's got a lot better, man. He looks good. He was on the scouts. He's working. But to say he's going to go play in this environment and, and take over, uh, I think that's a little bit of a stretch. If, if, if injuries happen, yeah, it could happen, you know, but it's hard when you say this kid's only been here, um, I don't know, six months, in, in the case of some of those guys you mentioned, for them to, to leapfrog and take over for somebody 
uh, that's been played in the system. And it's not like, oh, you just have to play the guys in the system. No, it's you play the guy that gives you the best chance to win. That's what we do at every single position. You play the guy that gives you the best chance to win. And when you do that, a lot of times the youngest ones don't have that opportunity. They just they haven't been in enough battles to be able to do that. Thank you.